for the most part, the faculty and the students were really excited about integrating. And it was something that they had really fought for for a long time. Tulane was uh, obviously long overdue to rethink itself and to open itself up, but this was New Orleans in 1965. The board was hesitant. They were af afraid how it would affect enrollment for the greater uh, university once they uh, integrated. But as early as the 50s, actually, the graduate faculty had pushed for integration. We did have the decision made by the board that the university would integrate. You know, it was only a few years later that Michael Starks was admitted to the law school. He said when he, was, when he first came in, they told him, like, don't, don't talk about it. I can't imagine what it would have, must have been really like for him to be the only person in, 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 that, in that environment for the first time. So for Michael Starks to come here in 1965 uh, and open up the doors and, and begin uh, this uh, transformation uh, of Tulane in a way that has made this law school uh, enormously richer and more vibrant uh, is incalculable. When Michael started at the law school that people treated him just like they did any other law student and he didn't feel different, you know, he was welcome into the student body just like every other law student was welcome. He worked at the city attorney's office in New Orleans and he definitely went on to have a very successful career. We worked together in a neighborhood law office and it was just a wonderful pleasure working with him because he was bright and he could see through a lot of people who came in there who I couldn't see through. I mean, I would interview somebody and I'd always think that what they'd said was right. And he would say, no, no, she's just putting you on. It's really da, 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 da. So he was wonderful to work with. Mike was uh, an attorney for the, uh, for the city of New Orleans. Uh, and I had a case uh, dealing with uh, someone who was being uh, suspended uh, from the uh, from a city employment. Mike was so happy to see an African-American uh, in the field of civil service representation because there were none. Uh, he said, uh, he says, this is all wrong. <laughs> it's like, let me show you how you should really go about uh, dealing with the civil service commission. He, gave me his phone number uh, and, was, uh, and was a mentor, again, in that sense. And I never lost a civil service case, except the one that, uh, that's the one that he had that I had against him. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a perfect record with civil service. I was the first African-American female to graduate from the law school in 1970. There were no other African-American students. There were a few professors who did not want to see women in law school. One of the professors made the remark that the top grades in his class would not have gone to women. But I blew it off uh, and we moved on. Most of the people here were really, really good people and really nice. It certainly wasn't a community of people who looked like me. There were three African American students in my law school class. I was the only female African American student. Now, I'm a very competitive person. And so every night I would read the materials before class and so usually I was the first person with their hand in the air every day. I got a job with the <laughs> New Orleans Legal Assistance Corporation which was at a place where almost every minority student who practiced in New Orleans worked at some point in time in their careers. I started my own practice in 1982 and I have never had a regret. My experience was that you know, we were pretty much tolerated. You know, you were there, congratulations. But you know, then there were some who made efforts and then some of the students were kind of open and welcoming. I always felt that I got the grades that I deserved. I never felt that anything was being taken from me as I did when I was at LSU, often had grades lowered. What I felt that, that Tulane offered was, quite frankly, an opportunity to show what you could do. That was fair enough, that's all I needed. It was all about, you're going to be a lawyer, and so you need to ha know how to think. What we need to teach you is how to think as a lawyer. And that's something that's been 
I think for both of us, um, something that has been a great thing in our lives and our careers. I think diversity was something that Tulane um, has struggled with historically and, and definitely struggled with during my time here. I was one of 13 uh, African American students in my class. We have to do a better job of really identifying uh, both the challenges and successes for students of color and figuring out what Tulane's role will be in, in curating and enhancing those, those, those skill sets. I think the class before me was very receptive towards helping me. I was very fortunate and, and feel I am fortunate to have been able to, to learn the law, um, to be able to advocate on behalf of, of people within the scope of the law. In terms of male to female, typical of any Institute of Higher Learning, more women than men, um, but we were really close-knit. Our Balsa community was strong. We were paired with um, upperclassmen who were mentors to us, big brother, big sister types. There weren't too many African-American professors. In fact, I had one, Professor Wesley, who taught um, ethics and professionalism, which is a critical class for anyone who's going to become a lawyer. With uh, Dean Leslie Griffin's arrival at the school and this new role as uh, Dean for Diversity Initiatives and Career Development, she's been having a huge impact already uh, in helping to uh, support diverse students. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, how could you come back to the law school that you graduated from? But honestly, it was a treat for me to come back here. I really felt like Tulane is a very supportive environment, and that was one of the main things that I was looking for in a law school. I definitely felt that the Balsa chapter here was a great way for me to get connected earlier. Um, having attorneys in my family, that was one thing they said num was number one, join Balsa, get connected, and that was a great way for me to, to learn from upper class students. It was, for me, invaluable to have, uh, you know, our, our little comfort group and, and, you know, that we could talk about our students, you know, the, the teachers and what was going on and what was buggers. I do see that there is an increase in the students of color, um, you know, as time is, is going by. The diversity here in just the one year has been great. It's been great. It has increased and it's definitely um, helped me in my journey here. Now we have two new black professors, uh, Professor Kristen McCarty and Professor Kristen Johnson. Things have come a long way. Uh, I do think uh, there's a, you know, just from personal observation, there's, there's much more of a consciousness to, uh, about, uh, about inclusion. Our black alumni have been, uh, from the very beginning, uh, active and generous in reaching back and supporting students. Uh, I mean, coming back, uh, Michael Starks himself coming back, uh, and mentoring students uh, through BALSA uh, and being very active and supporting. Uh, you know, they're leading civic organizations, they're leading in government, they're leading in the bar, uh, they're leading uh, and here at Tulane. These memories fade and, and the obligation you know, to, to remind ourselves of how far we've come, but also to remind Tulane the value of diversity in its, in its law school. There are always people when they find out you're a Tulane alum who will open, you know, they'll open up to you. So maybe I didn't meet them in another 1L, but now I'm meeting, I'm meeting them over the course of life and it's still the same open feeling. I have absolutely benefited from the alumni of color. They took the initiative to pour into me and to ask more of me in ways that was absolutely beneficial. There are young men who have come through Tulane that I you know, still look at and still try to work with them wherever I can and uh, to offer myself uh, as, as mentors to them. But that, that is also a part of the legacy.